every review I could find on the internet looking at Tombow brush pens versus WH Smith brush pens seem to concentrate on calligraphy and I'm not a calligrapher as you will see later but what I do love is urban sketching and nature sketching and given that two of my favourite artists, Ian Fennelly, brilliant urban sketcher, and John Muir Laws, um, both recommend dual tip brush pens, the Tombows. Well, they're good enough for them, they're good enough for me, but they're expensive. When I came across a set of greys in Smiths, made me think immediately, ooh, are those going to be as good as these? Um, and if they're not as good as, are they just a little bit worse? In which case, you know, because they were so much cheaper, that might be worth going that route. So I thought I would do a review today from a sketching point of view, not a calligraphy point of view. The reason I've got the grey sets is that I use them for adding tone to my sketches when I'm doing urban sketches or I'm out sort of en plein air sketching. Just to show you, uh, this is our village church and brilliant for adding tone, shadows and also fantastic for windows, really quick adding windows to buildings. Um, this is our village pub, which is actually owned by the church bizarrely enough and brush pens are great for adding these little window panes as well as adding tone without adding extra water to your sketch because when you're sketching outside drying is always the issue you haven't got a hairdryer to hand um, so being able to not add that extra water to your your paper is really important just to show you another one um, this is a friend's house which is just amazing and again the um, brush pens brilliant for these little panes of glass Finally. This is in Sonning in Berkshire. It's a really famous um, arts and crafts house. It's actually owned by Jimmy Page. There you go. Um, and this, this window would have just taken forever if I'd been using my fine liners. Whereas with, with you know, the dual tip pens, vroom, 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 could, could just sort of get that going. And then say shadow under this bridge, the dual tip pens, fab for doing that. So that's why I use them. I don't use it for all the fancy handwriting that I see going on. But I wanted to compare these two sets and see how good they are because I love the Tombows but they are expensive. So I thought I would compare the price, the range of colours that we've got in these greys, how blendable they are, things like size, light fastness, and those types of things which are really important for me as, as a sketcher. But first, I am going to try and do some of that fancy writing that I see everyone doing. Well, that's not too bad for a total novice, is it? The two grey sets. First of all, just so you know, this is heavyweight cartridge paper. It's like the paper I would have in my sketchbook. This Tombow Neutral set comes with six pens and I've just looked up the price. So I'll put six pens and the recommended price is 21 pounds however we know that most don't get sold for the recommended so this is april 21 and the cheapest i found them was actually 14 pounds 16p so there are bargains to be had these smiths ones again six pens and the uh, recommended retail price is 
I found them for $7.99 on Smith's eBay store and actually I bought them three for the price um, of two so they worked out just over seven pounds. First thing to say about the the Tombow is actually it's not six pence it's five pence plus this blender pen and the blender pen is I'm sure great if you're just colouring with um, your brush pens or you're doing lettering and wanting to to blend the colours etc but is pretty useless for what I want. So in fact, I would say it's five pence. So you can see the price difference. Basically, if you can get it at the, the, the cheapest rate, you know, these are still half the price of that. But, you know, if you're saving money and they're no good, you're not saving money. So, so let's have a look at that. First of all, just to do a comparison of the actual pen. The Tombows look slightly larger. So I am assuming the bigger they are, the more ink they have in them. I don't know if that's a safe assumption. So they both have that brush pen, brush nib, and you can just see the size difference there. So, you know, what's that? Two, two centimeters difference. And of course they both have The bullet nib at the other other end. I'm going to get totally confused about which lid is which but there you go. Both got water-based ink in them, transparent water-based ink so that's identical. Smith's ones are made in Taiwan and the Tombows are made in Vietnam. Let's just look at the width of the marks which look pretty similar to me. I found details on, on the Tombow, which was, um, let's think, I think they said 0 0.8. And on the brush, let's go that way. The Tombow, again, said that it was up to 3.3 millimeters. I have to say the Smith's one looks slightly wider but it's it's pretty marginal so size wise very similar. Dug around a bit and again this information isn't terribly easy to find but they are both not light fast so it, it is ink, it is transparent, you can see why I'm not a calligrapher and they are not, I'll put a cross by it, light fast. So again, both really, really similar. Both lots say, oh, they can be used just like watercolors and that they are highly blendable. Perhaps I should write that down. This is what the, the manufacturers say and they can be used like watercolor. No, no difference there. If you were on the, looking for colours for sort of, um, I don't know, adult colouring book or, or something like that, then um, there are you know, a huge range of colours. See, I've done that wrong, haven't I? God, get the pens right. That one goes there. Yeah, that's it. Neither has a clip, but they both have a little sort of bit on the lid to stop them rolling around which actually is really handy when you're out sketching sketching outside uh, because pens go everywhere um, they go everywhere when I'm in the studio to be perfectly honest the biggest thing for me is the color range so I'm going to swatch out these colors so that you can see what they look like now the Tombows all have reference numbers on which is really useful if you're replacing them or you're looking for a specific colour. So let's put, we've got, that's N89, then we've got, we'll do them in order of darkness I guess, N65, uh, what have we got next? 
uh, 45 and 15. And then we've got, let's pop those in order. Um, the WH Smiths ones don't have colour references at all. I'm just going by the colour of their lids, which let's hope is, is a good indication or not. We'll find out. This is N89. We'll just do a square. Very pale, soft, soft grey. Then we've got our 65. Oh, I didn't get those in order, did I? That's 79. That's nice, nice colour actually. That um, is more of a brownie grey. That's more of a neutral and that's actually quite a warm, light grey. Then we've got a, quite a dark. I've uh, got a definitely sort of warm tinge to that and then we've got the black which is pretty neutral okay well should have swapped those round just for my scientific purposes but never mind yeah so there's um quite a good range of greys from I say very very light nice warmish grey more neutral and then to dark probably that's the only really warm one in there that's got a slight warmth to it let's have a look at the smiths ones so this is their lightest which is definitely darker than the lightest in the tombos pretty neutral very similar I would have said to the the 65 there okay and then mm, slightly lighter than the 45 just sort of in between the 65 and the 45 rough guess it's probably 55 I don't know if I don't know how their numbering actually works well, that's a nice colour. So that's the fourth darkest on the Smiths, which is very close to the, the 45. That's only just off black, I would say. So slightly lighter than the N15. And then, yeah, we've got our black. And actually comparing these two, I would say this is a slightly warmer black than this. That's got a slightly cool edge to it. So pretty good range there. A slightly lighter one might be nice. But I have to say when I use this in um, my sketching, and I've only used these pens so far actually sort of out in the field, then I find this doesn't show up very much so probably that's a pretty good colour. What I think I would miss is this lovely warm mid grey because it's got a definite brown tinge to it whereas these are all pretty neutral. The biggest question, and you can hear water there, is the blendability. I am not going to use the blending pen because realistically if I need to blend it's likely to be with water when I'm out and about sketching I use a, a water brush I've just got water and a real brush here this probably will be hard to see because it is so pale that might be better and you can see how that moves and you end up losing pretty much the square underneath so that is very blendable so this is cartridge paper not watercolour paper that uh, warm grey that I rather liked doesn't look to be as blendable as that that other grey 
but it's certainly moving and that grey moves very nicely too and then let's try that black and I'm interested in the black because quite often you'll find black ink separate into like blues and, and browns um, if you ever use quink ink or something but that still still seems to stay pretty neutral if I really spread that out yeah that's that's a nice color so let's do the same with the Smiths ones All right, that light gray yeah that, that moves nicely well, that's interesting this one's not moving as much I mean the edges are softening but that would be perfectly acceptable yeah again not blending quite as much as the Tombows now oh, that one the darker grey that certainly moves and blends rather nicely that would be useful and then this dark grey oh that's lovely actually that's got a bit more warmth to it when when it uh, blends out now watch this one carefully because obviously I did test this before doing it and look how pink that blends out with water it really separates I don't know if I actually dab some of that away you'll see the pink yeah that really separates and I don't think I would be happy with that black if I decided to put some water over over my ink and I started to get all that pink coming out that might really throw off my my drawing mm. so that definitely requires a question mark for its usability but all these blended you've you've lost the edges and softened the edges and to be fair you don't want to lose them totally do you now I wonder and I haven't tried this is how easy it would be bl to blend just by going over the pens Can we get a fairly seamless blend? Hmm. Oops, let me make sure I get those in the right order. So usually if I was wanting to blend something like this I would end up going with a lighter pen over the top and that's really picking up the ink from the dark and actually taking it by, by doing it that way. So they certainly do blend and I think almost a little too much there I'd have to be careful using that that sort of technique with the Tombows let's do something similar so that's my lightest my N89 let me check this one say so the lids are a bit misleading so that's 79 then we'll go to the 65 the 45 and then finish up with that black and say so usually what I'd end up doing you see that's really again really picking up the dark so blending wise yeah I would say they're they're pretty similar there 
It might be interesting just to try the blending pen. I don't know, let's say I wanted to blend, or I don't know, that, that nice warm grey into my sort of darker grey. And that blending pen does work very nicely there. Let's do the same on my Smith's ones. So choose a lightish grey into a darker grey. And let's see how the Tombow blending pen, because I haven't got a blending pen. Yeah, that blends really nicely, actually. So I would say blendability wise, they are really similar. But what really stands out is the way that the black on the Smiths separates out. So I think if there's any chance of me putting water over the top of my pen work, I'm not going to be using that black. To be fair, the this darker grey, the M45, has definitely got a pink tinge to it. So they must use a very similar sort of setup there. Well, that was on um, a cartridge paper. And I just want to have a quick try on a piece of watercolour paper to see if the same holds true. I've got a piece of um, watercolour paper, just a scrap off an old painting, which um, is a knot surface. So that's a cold press surface. And let's just see how these work. Now with, with the texture, it will increase the wear and tear on your pens quite considerably. So you may find that they start fraying if you're using with watercolour paper rather than with um, a smooth sort of cartridge paper. Obviously, if you use hot press, that, that won't be so much of an issue. Um, I can't tell you about the, the wear and whether one wears quicker than, than the other because I've just not owned these um, WH Smiths one long enough. The Tombows I've used a lot and they're still going strong. Um, they haven't run out, which is great. Would be very interested to know whether whether that's you know true and whether the Smiths ones run out. Say they are slightly smaller, so maybe maybe they are um, less. Let's just try that blending pen here. Oh, I'm sorry, it was dirty. They are meant to be self-cleaning nibs, so let's clean it off there. Yeah, it doesn't blend well on the. Um, watercolour paper. I, I'm guessing because the watercolour paper is more absorbent. But let's try with water and see how, how well they blend here. Oh, that's better. I was a bit worried then. <laughs> but yeah, with water, they blend nicely. Again, that little pink tinge is coming out there. Yep, yeah, those blend, blend in with water. Let's check here. And again, we're getting that pink separation out on the black. I was just going back onto these because I wasn't sure how well they were blending, but I think they're fine. I'm seeing the softening of the edges, so, so they're good. I would say that the Tombows have a slight edge on the blendability on a watercolour paper, and that wasn't noticeable on the cartridge paper. OK, so I really can't tell you how well these nibs are going to um, last. Certainly the calligraphy people seem to think they don't fray very much, but they are using a smooth surface and we're likely to be using a textured one. So we'll just have to see on that one. As I say, ink capacity, I can't tell you at this point. But in terms of the range of colours, 
and the blendability, I would say that the WH Smith's brush pens are pretty jolly good. I do think the Tombos have a slight edge, but for that difference in price, and really you're getting five pens of each because we've said the blending pen's a bit useless and the black is a bit useless. So those are working out mm, about £1.50 each and those are working out almost £3. So for that, guess what? I am going to be buying these. Hope you found that useful. Always like to find new materials to try and to see, see what works for me. So I would highly recommend those.